morning everyone and welcome to St Mary's this morning for our morning service. Uh, we hope that you can join us uh, as the, uh, myself, the choir and the congregation will be here in St Mary's in worship. Uh, and so um, we are going to, uh, before we have our first hymn, just to say that um, we're going to have a retiring collection so uh, the uh, uh, dishes are at the back of the church so as you leave today please would you put your contributions into those plates at the back so we're going to start our service this morning by singing our first hymn which is number 54 
from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand, so let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you, we have done evil in your sight, we are sorry and repent, and have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing, and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us, and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sin and restore us in his image, in the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise God. If you wish, you may sit or kneel. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew, drew forth the world and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now, through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people into new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. May Christ, your light, ever drawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The night has far spent, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we are going to say our psalm, which is Psalm 85. I will say uh, a verse and you will respond with the words in bold. Psalm 85. I will listen to what the Lord God will say. For he shall speak peace to his people and to the faithful, that they turn not again to folly. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The Lord will indeed give all that is good, and our land will yield its increase. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so we have our readings.
reading from the first book of Kings. When Elijah reached for it on the mountain of God, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. And you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Mehunah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel. All the leaves that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. concerning the righteousness that comes from the Lord, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will ascend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. What does it, what does it say? The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will put, be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on the one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are 
sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be Gospel reading today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14. So now we're going to sing our next hymn, which is number 470.
the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David, through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all the dangers, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the earth God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, the child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from the high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So may the words that I speak in the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please. What were you doing at 20 past five this morning? Sleeping? No. I was awake. 20 past five, radio four, the shipping forecast. Or as they say, on test match special, that lovely Australian man says, the shipping forecast. He asked why we still need it, as uh, ships have got uh, GPS these days and other things. But um, I can tell you that the winds are dropping. It's going to be around about four, Force 5 for Lundy and the Bristol Channel. And uh, so it'll be a breezy day, but it won't be as strong a wind as yesterday, with showers coming over. And I hear it most mornings. I love the sea. As a child, I used to go down to a beach near to Swansea, and it was nothing to have something like six-foot waves that you could jump through or try to jump over. It was absolutely wonderful, and I thoroughly enjoy it. And every year, I have to have a beach holiday. I have to be near the sea. One year, I actually was at Cromarty, which is on the shipping forecast. But there's a downside to the sea as well. Many of you know that I lived in Germany for a number of years, and I came home every Christmas. Christmas is not a good time to be on the sea, not December. I can't remember the year, but some of you might. It was one of the early 1970s, and there was a, a train strike in the UK, and also a shortage of petrol. I had 250 miles to drive to, to a port, and then 250 miles from Dover to drive home. Not ideal when there's a shortage of petrol around. So I decided to take the train, got the train, got to Calais, got on the boat, and before we left the harbour, I heard the crash of the dishes from the kitchens. How long does it take to cross from Calais to Dover? An hour and a half? Two hours? Six hours later, we arrived. 
and I swear I could see you right down under the waves to the bottom of the channel. It was not good. In the Bible, the sea is there from the beginning of creation. In Jewish literature, the sea could be a terrifying place, a chaotic place, unlike the regularity and the order of the land, a place of terrifying monsters such as the Leviathan, a place so without order that God couldn't possibly live there. He couldn't be there. So, we have Jonah, for instance, who tried to escape God by going to sea. And yet, God is there and can control the elements and the danger they're in. He can trample the waves. He can part them, as in the story of Moses. He can use the water to destroy his enemies and those of his people. The power of God can be seen in this, his dominion of the sea. The disciples knew the beauty and the power of the sea. Some of them had earned their living as fishermen on the sea of the Lake of Galilee. They knew good days and they knew how the winds could roar down the hillsides and churn the water. Then it could be terrifying. They were being buffeted and tortured by rough waves on this night. And while the fishermen among them might have had the knowledge to cope, perhaps some of the other disciples, the land lovers like me, uh, were in a bit of a state of panic, if not a physical discomfort, shall we say? And then, and then they saw Jesus, and everything changed. For our story now changes too. Firstly, it becomes a challenge of faith. Is it Jesus, or is it a ghost? Is he really walking on the water? Could they believe what they were seeing? Then Peter, in his straightforward way, the Peter who challenges everything it seems that Jesus said or did, who would eventually deny him even, issues a challenge to Jesus again. If it is you, Lord, tell me to come to you and I'll do it. And then, confidence, faith, turns to doubt, and he begins to sink and has to be rescued. And so in this story, Christians throughout the ages have seen it as a mirror in their own lives, and we can easily see the parallels. The sea is our lives, as we take it on our daily tasks, living in the world and maintaining our faith in the face of all kinds of difficulties and challenges. It questions our faith and trust. We may smile at Peter's impotent action, but where does that leave us? Are we among the disciples huddled at the bottom of the boat, not even daring to look. The disciples were all sorts of people, and we must remember that so are we. The disciples had a revelation moment as they questioned, as they saw Jesus in action. They saw him doing something that only God could do, only God can control the nature. So what does that make Jesus? And so now, 
they recognised in him a power that was beyond that of a mere human. He was someone very special. And so we have the confession that Jesus is the Son of Man, the Messiah. <coughs> Not quite recognised as God's Son, but one empowered by God. Our relationship with Jesus is uniquely our own. And we are bound to come across events and situations where our faith is challenged. I have a book which is entitled The Courage to Doubt and often it is at that point of questioning that I have found that faith is strengthened and renewed and that realising the grace and love that is extended to us in our weakness that we are brought closer to God. But is it valid to have doubts? Jesus rebukes Peter when he fails. You of little faith, why did you doubt? I've often heard the term, use it or lose it. And I think this is what can happen with faith. If we do not use our faith, if we do not turn to Christ and rely on him in our darkest times, then perhaps that is when our faith is weakened and lost. And I'm re uh, reminded about the parable of the seeds, of when the seeds are thrown and when it lands on a ground that is not suitable, how it doesn't flourish. It's only in the good soil that the seeds grow into the root. There is one part of the story that is not part of the drama, but precedes it. Jesus went away to pray. He had been involved in so much teaching, healing and feeding the 5,000. So what did he do to refresh and renew himself? He went away to pray. And referring back to last week's uh, sermons, how important the mountains are. We have the story today of Elijah again going up a mountain and Jesus going up a mountain. Because in Jewish tradition, heaven, the place of where God resides, is somewhere up there. So how to get near to God? Logically, you go to the highest place. And as I said in Derry Hill, when I was talking to them last week, uh, the week of transfiguration, I don't know if Derry Hill is that much more holy than calm, but we shall wait and see. So, Jesus goes to a place where he can renew and refresh himself with God. We may say, see him more clearly in the power that he brings. He has the power that God has. He has come to meet with us. But like the story of Elijah, he does not come in the storm that was so making the disciples anxious. He came and said, what? He came and asks Peter to hold out his hand and come to him. However we encounter Jesus, we should have the courage to go when he calls knowing that within all our failings and doubts and the turmoil of life, he is there in the centre, in the calm of the whirlwind, in the calm of the hurricane, in the calm of the storm, 
in the center. He is there, reaching out to us, upholding and supporting us, bringing us his courage and his peace to continue with our lives in this world to his glory. And as I was writing this sermon, thinking about the readings, another thought came to mind. And Steve is now going to play a song from my past and perhaps your past that I just felt just reflected our relationship with Jesus and ourselves. Thank you, Stephen. some feet for tapping but it's a joyful song and a reminder of what Jesus was saying to us all I will be there forever before us of you doing your life just reach out and take my hand I'll be there and so let us affirm our faith in Jesus in God and the spirit that upholds us
down, and oh, my soul so weary. When troubles come, and my heart burdened be. Then I am still, and wait here in the silence, until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up, so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up, to walk on stormy seas. I am strong, when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up, to more than I can be. Good morning, Father. Let us lift our hands in grateful thanks for the new, for the never failing patience with us as we tumble and stumble through our days, and for your promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Father, hear us as we pray today for the body of the church throughout the world. Guide and prosper the servants who work tirelessly in the service of Jesus Christ. May they ever be mindful that they defend our faith as we continuously look to them as role models in our own lives. Hold and protect our brothers and sisters who live in areas where there is no tolerance to openly love and worship you. Thank you, thank you for our own spiritual home here at St. Mary's and for all, all who give their time and talents in maintaining your church as a Christian centre and for being the guiding voice and holding up so many in their darkest hours. Father, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God bless the King and his family. We pray for the leaders of our country and the world, that they may be guided in the ways of justice and peace. Give them strength for their tasks, patience and understanding, and most of all, the wisdom to do the best for the people they serve. Today we pray for your world in conflict, especially for Africa. God bless Africa. God her children, guide her leaders, and give her peace. And for all the children who are suffering under the crisis in Ukraine, as the crisis in Ukraine deteriorates, for those who are anxious and fearful, for those who are bereaved, injured, or who have lost their lives, and for those who have lost loved ones. Father, in your mercy, Amen. Lord, we are your children. Help us, we pray, to continue Jesus' work on earth, to continually remind us to open our eyes and hearts to others around us that we may know and understand the people we live among, to notice when someone is unhappy, to see when someone feels cut off or isolated, to be thoughtful when someone is ill. Give words of encouragement. Help someone to feel welcome. Realise when someone just needs to talk. To let someone know that someone cares for them. Help us to be your body, your mouth, your hands for those in need. Father, in your mercy. Lord God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, understood people's fear and pain, we bring to you all who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit, the homeless, the unemployed, those suffering from addictions, and anyone in any kind of distress. We especially think of today Mark Steele, Christine Dunley, Mark Jennings, Lynn Cottrell, Rob Simons, Jacob Malloy, Paul Crayford, Les Pinch, Laurie Williams, Sonia Strange, Judy Scott, Amelia Bolter, Ken Goodship, Alex Grenfell, Caroline Manson, Cheryl Eaton, Christopher Connor, the Reverend Craig Manley, Curtis, Debbie Smith, Eddie Elliott, Teresa Elliott, Jeff Morris, Jennifer Fenton, John Keller, Baby Kelly Daly, Nicola Ripley, Rick, Rex Hutchins, Henry Wannan, and Thomas. 
and all those remain quietly in our hearts. Surround the frightened with your tenderness. Give strength to those in pain. Hold the weak in your arms of love and give hope and patience to those who are recovering. Father, in your mercy, we remember our recently departed. Thank you for the hope of eternal life that you have given us in your Son. Bring us, with all who have run before us in faith, to the joy of his risen life. And we remember today Eve Holt and Danny Farrell. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let a perpetual light shine upon them. May the souls of all the faithful depart in to, to the mercy of God rest in peace. Father, in your mercy, hear our You raised me up so I can stand on mountains. You raised me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raised me up to more than I can do. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Publish the bands of marriage of Adam Frederick Jack McCarry of this parish and of Bethany Rose uh, Alana Hill of this parish, of Mark Edward James Shepherd uh, of this parish with a qualifying connection with. Uh, 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 St. James Cheryl and Irene Mary Tomkinson of St. James's Cheryl and of Jason Rowe of, or, of My, uh, Michael Landbrook Grove and qualifying connection with St. Peter's Notting Hill and Lucinda Creswell of this parish with a qualifying connection with St. Peter's Notting Hill. All these three couples are for the third time of asking. Uh, if there's uh, any reason why these uh, couples may not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it now. A grand silence, lovely. And I also publish the bands of marriage of Kean William Enderby of this parish with a qualifying connection with St. Mary's Tenby and Sarah Jane Louise Hanlon of this parish with a qualifying connection with St. Mary's Tenby. And this is for the first time of asking. And there is also silence, no objections to this marriage either. So let us pray. Father, we pray for these couples as they prepare for their marriage together, their life together. We pray that they know your presence with them in all that they do, in all that they say. That your peace, your comfort, and your joy be with them in all adversities they may encounter in their married lives together. Thanks be to God for their coming together in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. In today's collect prayer, Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, Give us patience and courage, never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, so.
So, where are we? Um, so if we say together the Lord's Prayer. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us us, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Right, now we're going to sing our final hymn, which is number 716. <laughs> Thanks be to God.